mandibular anesthesia. The height of the injection is established by the greatest depression of the ascending ramus, the coronoid notch, a concavity on the anterior lateral border of the ramus. This is also the deepest part of the mandibular raffae. This will be a horizontal line from the anterior moving posteriorly. The vertical intersection will be three-fourths from the notch or one-fourth from the raffae. This intersection is the injection site. It is usually six to 10 millimeters above the occlusal plane. The barrel will be contralateral starting at the second premolar area. With the syringe held parallel to the mandibular occlusal plane and at the level of the coronoid notch, the needle will be in a plane that intersects the mandibular sulcus unimpeded. Because of the lateral flare of the ramus, the syringe must be advanced from the contralateral premolar region for the needle to enter the sulcus. Clinically, the coronoid notch is determined by palpating the most lateral aspect of the anterior ramus. Here, the thumb, kept parallel to the mandibular occlusal plane, is moved into position within the coronoid notch. A line bisecting the thumbnail establishes the height of injection. The insertion point itself is on this line just lateral to the pterygomandibular raffae, the soft tissue roll that denotes the junction between the buccinator and superior constrictor muscles and marks the medial border of the pterygomandibular space. The lateral border of the space can be determined by palpating the deep tendon of the temporalis muscle on the temporal crest of the ramus. The insertion must be made medial to this landmark. With the patient's mouth wide open, the thumb is placed over the anterior border of the ramus and pulled laterally, retracting the cheek and the buccal pad until it rests within the greatest depression of the coronoid notch and is made parallel to the mandibular occlusal plane. With the syringe oriented over the opposite premolars, the needle is advanced to the insertion point lateral to the pterygomandibular raffae and at the height of an imaginary line bisecting the thumbnail. The needle is then inserted slowly through the mucosa and buccinator muscle into the pterygomandibular space. A few drops of anesthetic solution delivered as the needle is advanced may help reduce the discomfort of needle insertion. Once bone is contacted after an insertion of 20 to 25 millimeters, the needle is withdrawn slightly and an aspiration test is performed. After a negative aspiration, approximately two-thirds of the cartridge is injected at a rate not to exceed one cartridge per minute. If lingual nerve anesthesia is desired, it can be easily achieved by withdrawing the needle halfway and depositing the remaining third of the cartridge after a second negative aspiration test. The needle is then removed and recapped and the patient is allowed to rest for the three to five minutes it normally takes for anesthesia to develop. The mental or incisive nerve may be anesthetized for procedures involving the chin and lower lip, the buccal mucosa and mucoperiosteum from the premolars to the midline, or to supplement an incomplete inferior alveolar nerve block. The target for the injection is anterior to the mental foramen situated just below the apex of the mandibular second premolar. Its location can be determined with the aid of radiographs and by gentle palpation in the buccal vestibule. For a successful mental nerve block, there is no need to penetrate the mental foramen with the needle. This injection is best accomplished with the clinician positioned behind the patient. The lip is retracted between the thumb and forefinger and the foramen is located. With the tissue pulled taut, penetrate the mucobuccal fold adjacent to the second premolar, advance the needle five to six millimeters aspirate and slowly deposit about one-third of the dental cartridge. Maxillary anesthesia. The alveolar mucosal tissue is palpated at the injection site in the vestibule at the height of the mucobuccal fold superior to the apex of the maxillary second premolar to ensure only soft tissue is injected. Using a 27 gauge short needle Orient the syringe parallel to the long axis of the tooth with the large window facing the operator. 
insert the needle at the height of the mucobuccal fold at the apex of the maxillary second premolar, approximately one fourth of the depth of the short needle, about five millimeters or until the bevel is slightly superior to the apex of the tooth. Aspirate within two planes. Slowly deposit 0.9 to 1.2 milliliters of solution, about one half to two thirds of the cartridge over 60 to 90 seconds. Prior to delivering local anesthetic, place topical anesthesia on a cotton wool roll and apply to the gingiva. Allow this plenty of time to work. Buccal infiltration is the most commonly used anesthetic in children. Locate the mucobuccal fold and insert the short or extra short needle slightly superior to the apex. Slowly deposit the anesthetic beginning superficially. Only inject into the soft tissues. Make sure to aspirate to avoid injecting into a blood vessel. Ensure the correct anaesthetic and dosage is delivered. 2% lignocaine is frequently used. The maximum dose is a tenth of a 2.2 ml cartridge per kilogram. For example, in a 5-year-old, 4.4 ml is the maximum dose. <laughs>